In the previous video, we modeled a procedurally generated forest using not much more than a tree and an ice tree. In this video, we'll use ice to apply random materials to the trees in the forest and then apply a different texture to each material. We already have a material on our forest, but we need to make some more materials if we want to randomize them. To do this, press Ctrl 7 to open the Materials Manager. Select the forest material, right click on it, and choose Duplicate Material twice. In the render tree of the new Forest 1 material, open the Lambert shader and set the diffuse color to a more olive shade of green. For the Forest 2 material, set the diffuse color to a bright green. Now that you have created the materials you want, you need to apply them to the trees using ice. To do this, you create an array with the names of the materials you want to use, and then use that array to set the forest object's materials attribute. Let's start by building the array of materials in the ice tree. Select the forest object. The ice tree we created for it in the last video is still shown below. Find the Set Materials from Strings compound in the Preset Manager on the left and drag it into the ice tree workspace. If you open this compound, you can see that it builds an array using material strings, which we'll provide, and then sets the materials attribute for that object. Instead of typing in a long string, let's go to where the materials are stored in the scene and get the full name string from there. In the Explorer, click the Materials filter, then drag the forest material name into the ice tree to create a get data node with its name. Open this node and copy the materials name string from there. Then open the Set Materials from Strings property editor and paste this in the Material Name 1 text box. Paste this string two more times in the following Material Name 2 and Material Name 3 text boxes. Update the names of the materials in the strings to Forest 1 and Forest 2. Make sure to remove the Material 4 string since we're not using a fourth material. You can delete the Forest Materials Get Data node since you don't need it anymore. Plug the Execute output from the Set Materials from Strings node into a port on the Ice Tree node below the branch that generates the trees. With this material array created and the materials attribute set for the forest object, we'll randomly assign these materials to the polygons of each tree in the forest. This gets done with the help of the random material ID per copy compound. The material ID ice attribute specifies which element in the materials array is applied to each polygon based on whatever criteria you choose. In this case, it's random assignment. Plug the execute on copy output from the random material ID per copy node into a port on the ice tree below set materials from strings. Now you should see that the polygons on each tree have a randomly selected material. There's one thing to note if you're using the default scene material on the forest object. With the material ID attribute, a value of 0 specifies to use whatever material is applied to the object itself. If you don't want to use the default scene material, simply apply a different material to the forest object, as we did in the previous video, and update the strings with its name in the set material from strings node. If you like, you could also add a texture to each material. We'll turn our green forest into a gingerbread cookie forest by adding some cookie textures. To do this, let's return to the Materials Manager. Select the forest material, then in the render tree area below, get an image shader from the node's textures menu. Instead of an image, you could also use any of the procedural texture shaders here. Open the Image Shaders property editor, choose New, New from File, and select an image to use as the texture for this material. The image also needs a texture projection to determine how it's projected onto the forest. Select Planar XY in this case. Plug the image shader into the diffuse port of the Lambert shader. You can see the texture on the trees that are using the forest material. 
You can also see the texture support object that was made for the forest when we created the texture projection. You can adjust a texture by clicking the Advanced tab of the image shader and changing the number of repeats and the pattern distribution. Repeat this process for the other two materials until all three have different textures but use the same texture projection. You now have a randomly generated and textured forest using ice. Any change you make to the material or texture used is automatically updated for all trees that are using that material. In the ice tree, you can also add or remove materials that are used in the materials array. One thing to note about this method of texturing the copies is that the textures won't automatically scale if the trees change size. However, depending on the object shape, the texture, and how far the objects are from the camera, this may not matter much. And you can always apply the textures after you've decided on the final size of the objects. Of course, if you want to make the textures scale with the size of the copies, you can do it, but that's a deeper dive into ice. To recap, we showed how to create a simple ice modeling setup to procedurally generate copies of an object using very few objects. This setup's flexibility allows for many variations, so you can go on and use this idea as a base for creating your own effects with ice.